Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I, Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the HESI. We have been solving math problems out of this book here the HESI Admission Assessment Exam Review, the third edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Right now, we are in the process of solving problems dealing with percentages, percentage problems. And we are on page number 31. Please turn to it, page number 31. The sample problems that you see there on that page, at the bottom of the page, there are 10 of them. Yesterday we did 1 through 4. Today we'll pick up from number 5. After having finished, after having finished these 10 problems, if you feel that you need more practice, if you feel that that's not enough and you need to work on some more problems, to become a little bit more comfortable with the percentage problems. There are three more videos here that you can watch. Just type in T's Math Day 13 or 14 or 15 and you will find some more problems, for some more percentage problems. As I have pointed out to you several times in the past, the math that you will encounter on the HESI is very similar to the math that one encounters on the T's. They are comparable. In addition to that, if you need even more practice, there is a, ser there is a series of basic math in the basic math series, in the basic math series from day number 31 through 40, we did percentage problem as well. In this series from 31 through 40, as you go higher up in the numbers, they get more and more difficult, they get more and more complicated. You will not find percentage problem as complicated as the one that you will find here towards the very end. Just watch the first five. The first five should suffice. Just watch day number 31 through 31 through 35 and that should suffice. Basic math, day 31 through 35. Let's get going. Number 5 is already on the blackboard. Number, question number 5 is where we're going to pick up from. The question simply is, what is 95% of 20? Now yesterday we learned, yesterday we learned, yesterday we learned how to convert these percentage problems into equations. The reason why sometimes people have trouble coming up with the right answer in percentage problems, the reason why some people struggle with these kind of questions is because when they read the question, they want to come up with the entire equation for the problem in one shot. That is not how it's done. You must translate, you must learn how to translate one word at a time, which is what we learned yesterday, which is what we're going to do right now. So here we go. What? That's our unknown. And traditionally, we represent our unknown with letter X. If you, re if you represent it with letter Y, the unknown, or letter P, or Q, or A, or B, nothing is going to happen. It's just the tradition dictates. The convention is that one represents the letter uh, uh, one represents the unknown quantity in algebra with letter x. I don't know why, but that's just the way it is. Is is are were was will be they all mean equal sign. Is means equal. 95 of course is just 95. What does the word percent mean? Percent. The next part here is percent. What does it mean? We learned it yesterday. Percent the word percent literally means what it says. It means per 100. The word percent means per 100. Per 100. Or if you like, it means out of 100. So if someone says 7%, if someone says 7% and you want to represent that quantity as a fraction, 7% simply means 7 out of 100. If someone tells you 38 and 38 and a half percent, well, that's just 38 and a half over 100. 45 percent is 45 over 100. Here we have 95 percent, 95 over 100. 95 over 100. Off means times, that means multiply. Off means multiply. Finally, we have 20. That's it, we're done. That's our equation. Before we go any further, do not confuse, do not confuse my multiplication sign with the unknown x. You see? x and multiply. Let's get going. That's it. We're done. Enough of the talk. Let's get going. The very first thing we notice is that we have 20 on the top, we have 100 on the bottom. Now if it bothers you, if it bothers you, and I refer to this 20 as being on the top because it's written somewhere a little bit lower, if it bothers you, if you feel more comfortable, write it like this, 20 over 1. There you go. Because 20 is still 20, it's just written as 20 over 1 is a fraction, if it helps you, visually that is. 
we have 20 on the top and 100 on the bottom, let's divide top and bottom by 5, uh, let's divide top and bottom by 20. If you divide 20 by 20, that becomes 1, and 100 divided by 20 is 5. So that part is done. Now we have x that is equal to 95, 95 times 1, times 1, times 1 is just 95. So that's right there. And here we have 5 times 1, that's just 5. If you can divide 95 by 5, we are home free. Okay, let's get going. We're taking too long. How many 5 does 9 have? 9 has 1 5. 9 has 1 5. Once you take away 5 from the 9, once we take away 5 from the 9, we are left with 4. That remainder, that remainder of 4 is going to join, is, is going to go to 5 and become 45. And 45 has 9 fives. 9 fives are 45. 9 fives are 45. Since we divided the top by 5, we must divide the bottom by 5. There you go. x equals 19 over 1, which is same as 19. There is, there is your answer. So the question was, what is 95% of 20? The answer is 19 is 95% of 20. 19 is 95% of 20. That's one way of looking at it. Let's look at it a little bit differently this time. I'm going to do it. Uh, we're going to do it one more time, a little bit differently. Okay, watch here. We need we need the room obviously, so we're going to, have to erase all of this. The second method. Here we go. Question is, what is 95% of 20? If somebody asks you, what is 95% of 87, or what is 95% of 20, or what is 95% of 435? Pay absolutely no attention whatsoever to the question. Make up your own problem, a simpler problem. Here's what you do. When somebody asks us to figure out 95% of something, ask yourself, ask yourself, what is 5% of something? What is 5% of 20? Once we have the 5%, you see, let's do it here. 20 is the whole thing. 20, 20 is the whole thing, which is the 100%. Isn't it? If we can figure out what 5% is, if we can figure out what 5% is, if you, if you can figure out what 5% of this amount is, if we subtract 5% from the 100%, what we would have is the 95%. It stands to logic. It stands to reason. It's logical that if I if I want to find out 95% of something, I could figure out just 5% of it, which will be easier to calculate, and then subtract 5% of the whole 5% from the whole amount. Whatever remainder is must represent 95% of the quantity. Simple logic, isn't it? Let's do it out. One more time, I'm going to pick up speed now. What, that's our unknown, x is means equals 5 is just 5, percent means over 100, of means times, and then 20. Well, we see 20 on the top, we see 100 at the bottom, let's divide top and bottom by 20. 20 divided by 20 is 1, 100 divided by 20 is 5. You with me so far? We see 5 on the top, we see 5 on the bottom, let's divide top and bottom by 5. 5 divided by 5 is 1, and 5 divided by 5 is 1. So what are we left with? We're left with, we're left with x is equal to, x is equal to 1 times 1, 1 times 1, which is 1, over 1, which is just 1. There you go. Turns out, turns out that the 5% of 20, turns out that 5% of 20 is just 1. Well, if 5% of 20 is 1, if we were to take that away, the remainder, the 19 that we have there, must represent 95%, which is exactly what we found earlier. So that was another way of looking at it. Do you understand? It's very important that you are able to look at the uh, problem and the concept at a gut level, at an intuitive level, be able to look at it in a different way, different, from different perspective. Don't just memorize the formula, this is the, oh my god, this is the percentage formula, that's what I have to use then you're not understanding the concept, you're simply doing the problem mechanically, like a robot, like a freak, like a nerd, like a geek. Never do the problem like a geek, do you understand? Have some intuitive understanding of it. Let's do it one more way. Let's, I'm going to show you the third way. Okay, I'm going to show you the third way, right here. I'm going to show you the third way here. 20, 20 is what we're dealing with, right? 20 is what we're dealing with. Can you tell me what is, what is 10%, what is 10% of 20? Do you understand what 10% means? 10% means the tenth of something. 10% means, 10% means a tenth of something. What is the tenth of 20? Tenth of 20 is 2. 
ten percent of twenty, ten percent of twenty, ten percent of twenty is two. You with me? If ten percent of twenty is two, then if you were to take half of that, ten divided by two, which is five percent, five percent of twenty must be half of this amount. If ten percent is twenty, five percent would be one. Let me rewrite it. If ten percent if 10% is 20, 10% uh, is 2 rather, 10% of 20 is 2, then 5% must be half of it. There you go, that was a quicker way. I don't know why I didn't see it right from the beginning. If 10, you are able to see, you are able to see that 10% of 20 is 2. Well, if 10% is 2, 5% must be 1. Once we have the 5%, take away 5% from the whole and the remainder must be the 95%. 20 minus 1 is 19. That is exactly what we found. 19 we found to be... 95% of 20. Let's do the next one, shall we? Number number 6. Number 6. We are being asked to figure out what is 15.5% of 600. We are being asked to figure out 15.5% of 600. Let's do it together, shall we? Well, we know we know that fifteen and a half percent, fifteen and a half percent of one hundred. How much is fifteen and a half percent of one hundred? How much is fifteen and a half percent of one hundred? Thirty-seven percent of one hundred is thirty-seven. Four percent of one hundred is four. Twelve percent of one hundred is twelve. Because percent means out of one hundred. It's already out of one hundred. The question is asking, this is the way we set it up, it's out of 100, not 600. The way we set it up is out of 100. So 15.5% of 100, 15.5% of 100 would, so would have to be simply 15.5, wouldn't it? Let's raise all of this thing so we, can, we don't get confused. Are you with me so far? Now watch what happens. We are not interested in 100, we are interested in 600. We have to figure out 15.5% of 600, but that's very simple. Multiply it by 6. Voila! 15.5% of 600 must be 6 times the amount. That's it, we are done. All we have to figure out is what is 6 times 15.5. Let's do it here. 6 times 15.5. Are you with me? Stay with me in the story. 6 times 15, 6 times 15, and if you don't know 6 times 15, let's just do it out. It only takes a second. 15 times 6. 6 fives are 30, 0. 33, 6 1 the 6 plus 3 is 9. 90. So 6 times 6, 6 15 is a 90. And then we have to do 6 times a half. How much is it if you have 6 halves? How much are 6 halves? I know that if I have a half and a half, 2 halves make a 1. Another 2 halves will make another 1. So that's 2 so far. 4 halves make a 1. 6 halves should make 3. 6 halves make a 3. There you go, we are done. So, one more time. 6 times 15 is 90. And 6 halves, 6 halves are 3. The answer is 93. The question was, what is, what is 15 and a half percent of 600? We just found, we found, we found that unknown quantity. This is our what? This is our what? The unknown. Now we can replace it in here, and now we'll have our answer. The answer is 90 plus 3, which is 93, is 15.5% of 600. There is no more question mark. That is your answer. That's your answer. Now the answer is 93 happens to be 15.5% of 600. Let's do one more, shall we? Number 7. Number 7. Number 7 is asking us, 2 is 20% of what? 2 is 20% of what? This is precisely the reason, this is precisely the reason why I want you to watch T's math, day 13, 14 and 15 and these problems here. So that's where, that's where we learned our tenths, our fifths, our quarters, our eighths, and our thirds. You must know by heart your tenths, your fifths, 
your quarters, your eighths, and your thirds by heart. You must have all of that information at your fingertips. If we did know that, we would realize that 20% of something, 20% of something is just, is just a fifth of the amount, fifth of the amount. If somebody asks us what is 20% of something, if somebody asks us what is 20% of something, what they're asking us essentially is, what is the fifth of it? How much is the fifth of it? Well, can you tell me, can you tell me what is, can you tell me two is a, two is a fifth, fifth of what? That's what they're asking here. When they say 20%, when they say 20%, about 20% is the same as asking a fifth. 20% is the fifth. Two is a fifth of what? Now if you look at it that way, now if you look at it that way, now the question becomes damn silly. Two is a fifth of what? Well, obviously, obviously two is a fifth of ten. That's it. Two is a fifth of ten. If you have ten, if you have ten, and if you take a fifth of that, divide by five, you will get two. There you go. 2 is a fifth of 10. Let's do the next one, shall we? Number 8. Number 8. Question number 8. 65 is 25%. 65 is 25% of what? Again, just like that concept here before, just like that concept here before, we have to understand what 25% represent. 25%, 25% of something is just a, just a what? Is just a, 25% of something, if somebody asks us to take 25% of something, 25% of something is just a, I shouldn't have written in capital letters because now it gives it away. Now it gives it away that I don't know how to spell quarter. But that's what I'm trying to say here, quarter. Maybe I'll keep spelling it five. Quarter. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. A 25% of something means a quarter of something. A quarter of something. Spelling, spelling is not my forte, you understand? Spelling is... Spelling is not my forte. So question here is 65, 65 is 25% of what? Which is same as asking, which is same as asking 65, which is same as asking 65 is a quarter of what? Well, that's very silly. That's a very silly question now. 65, 65 is a quarter of 65 times 4. Obviously, because if you have 65 times 4, if you have 65 times 4, and if you take a quarter of it, what you'll end up is a quarter, or what you'll end up is a 65. 65 is a quarter of 65, 65 times 4. All we have to figure out is what 65 times 4 is. Let's do it here. 65 times 4, 5 for the 20, that's a 0, carry 2, 6 for the 24 plus 2 is 26. You must know your tables, you must know your tables by heart, 1 through 12, as I pointed it out to you several times, as I emphasized it several times in the beginning of the series, you must know your timetables by heart. In the basic math series, in the basic math series, we learned our timetables on the first 12 days. You must know your timetables. 1 through 12, by heart. That's what it is. You have to know your table of 4. 5 4 is a 20, 0, carry 2, 6 4 is a 24, plus 2 is 26. There is your, there is your answer. Question was, 65 is 25% of what? 65 is a quarter of what? The answer is, 65 happens to be a quarter of 260. There is your answer. 65 is a quarter of 260. Let's do the next one, shall we? Number 9. Number nine. Number nine is asking us nine is nine is 
20% of what? 9 is 20% of what? We are back to the 20%. 20% 20% of something, 20% of something is just a is just a fifth of something. No, fifth I do know how to spell. 20% 20% of something is just a fifth of the amount. So the question here is, question here is 9 is a fifth, fifth of what? 9 is a fifth of what? Because, because that's what 20% is. 20% of something is a fifth. What do you suppose the answer is going to be? 9 is a fifth of what? Answer is 9, 9 will be 9 is a fifth. It turns out that the answer is 9 is a fifth of 9 times 5. What else? Obviously, because if you have 9 times 5, if you have 9 times 5, and if you take a fifth of it, the fifth, the fifth of 9 times 5 is just 9. That's what it is. 9 times 5 is 45. 9 times 5 is 45. So the answer here is 9 is 20% of 9 is 20% of 45. That's the very last one. Number 10. Number 10. Number 10 is saying 44 is 44 is 25% of what? Well, we already know. We already know that 25% means a quarter. So the question here is 44 is a quarter of what? You see, that's the trick. The trick, the trick here is if you write it in a messy way, in a cursive way, in a very messy handwriting, it serves two purposes. First of all, it makes you look very sophisticated. Secondly, it hides the fact that you cannot spell. When I write it in a capital letter, it gives it away that I'm no good at spelling. Here, I can get away. So the question here is 44 is a quarter of what? Well, it's very simple. 44, 44 is a quarter of 44 times 4. What else? Obviously, because if you have 44, if you have 44 times 4, and if you want to take a quarter of that, if you want to take a quarter of that, we'll end up with 44. There you go, that's your answer, 44 times 4, whatever that happens to be. 44 times 4, 4 fours are 16, that's 6, carry 1, 4 fours are 16 again, plus 1 is 17. 176 is the answer, 44 is 25 percent of of 176. That was the end of the topic of percentages. That's all there is, that's all she wrote. Tomorrow we'll begin algebra. Tomorrow we'll begin the topic of algebra. As you turn the page on page number 32, at page number 32 is talking about Military time, we're not going to worry about military time because we're not going to go on a crusade. So we're going to move on to the algebra, okay, on, on uh, tomorrow, on page number 33. Bye now.